Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today um, I'm going to be telling So in May, I read seven books. I feel like a lot of them were audiobooks, so I'll let you know when they were audiobooks, but let's just get into it. So the first book I finished in May was Dear Dolly, and I finished this one May 2nd. I guess a majority of it I read in April. So in April, I read Everything I Know About Love and I really enjoyed it. So I figured I would read more of her oeuvre and I decided to pick up Dear Dolly. I didn't really enjoy this as much as Everything I Know About Love. This is a collection of her, she does like an advice column. So this is a collection of her favorite entries in the advice column. So that was what this book was. It was fine. Um, if you like her sense of humor you'll like it but I don't I don't know if I'd recommend it it was fine it was fine the next book I read was Every Summer After by Carly Fortune and I read this ahead of going to the book signing for Meet Me at the Lake which is right here um for the signing for Meet Me at the Lake because my friend really wanted to go so I figured I would read it I actually listened to it on audiobook and then I bought this copy after so you can tell I really liked it I thought this was so cute. It's kind of my ideal romantic fantasy that I always had as a kid was to go on vacation and meet a cute boy, fall in love, have a whirlwind romance, and I never got that. So this book is as close as I'm ever gonna get to that happening to me because I am 25 years old and I'm a little too old for that now. And I do have a long-term boyfriend. That's besides the point. This was very cute. I loved it because the area that she's talking about uh, is Barry's Bay, which is near Algonquin. And I love that area of Ontario. I also love Algonquin. So I was really happy to read this. And it was just so cutesy. I love a dual POV. I love second chance romance, friends to lovers, childhood friends to lovers. It kind of checks every box for me. So this is really cute. It was a four star. I don't know if I've ever actually rated a romance a five star. I love reading romances, but they are never my favorite top 100% love this book that I read in a year. But this was really good. And if you're looking for a beach read, this is an awesome pick. The next book that I finished in May was Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. Just when I thought I would have a reading recap with no Lee Bardugo, I read this in May. I took a while to finish this because I love Six of Crows so much. I love this duology. I just didn't want it to end. So uh, I loved it. Five stars. Awesome. Made me cry, of course. Uh, as a Nina and Matthias, number one OTP shipper. I haven't said OTP in like a decade. Um, that was weird. So as a Nina and Matthias person, this broke my heart. Um, yep. Yeah. So, <laughs> but I really like it. If I haven't talked about Six of Crows enough, this book is awesome, five stars, love you. The next book I read slash listened to in the month of May was Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. I have thought about reading this book for a while because my mom loves it and I've re like watched the movie. So I was like, well, I've seen the movie. Do I really need to listen to the book? Those are completely different stories. I don't know where the hell they got the plot for the movie, but the book is completely different. I don't know which one I liked better. I would say the plot was a little bit more cohesive and made more sense in the movie because I found the plot in the book a little bit like segmented. There wasn't really enough time I thought to build up relationships because he could only talk to people for like two, three chapters and then he would be alone for a big chunk of the book. It was interesting because it clearly covers a longer time period. So I guess it makes a bit more sense that way. But Wade is really annoying. Like the main characters are really annoying. And like, that was kind of hard to get through. He's annoying in the movie too, but I don't know. I did like the book though. Like, I feel like I'm talking trash, but I actually enjoyed the book. If you like sci-fi and video games, it's fun. I read it recently after finishing Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. So it was, I was already in the video game book mindset. I have to try and find more video game books because I re did really enjoy it. So yeah, that one is probably like a four star, I guess, four star, 
three and a half, around there. My mom was happy that I read it and that's worth the world because they read it during Mother's Day month. So yeah. The next book I listened to was Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. And I've talked about this in a video already, I know, um, in my mid-year freak out. All right, that's when I talked about it. But I actually really enjoyed this and I was surprised. I didn't think it was going to be good because the series is like done and finished. Hunger Games is, you know, in our past. It was like over 10 years ago now. But this was actually really good and I think very worthy of being told and being turned into a movie. I'm excited to go see the movie. The trailer has me real jazzed. I didn't read The Hunger Games when it first came out. I read it after the movies came out because I was different and unique. I didn't read what was popular. I read One Direction fan fiction. I listened to this and I think it's kind of the best way to consume The Hunger Games content books. It's, it's a great audiobook, but it was really interesting. It goes beyond the games. Like the games are only a small part of a full story and it gives you the insight into a, a heinous man. The next book I read I have also talked about and that is The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. This one I read physically and maybe I would have liked more if I'd listened to it, but I did, I was so disappointed with this. I read The Guest List by Lucy Foley and I enjoyed it. Like it was quite suspenseful. I feel like Lucy Foley books are very suspense heavy, but this one just did not do it for me. It wasn't able to build that same sense of like eeriness that I got with The Guest List and that's pretty much the whole book is them trying to build this sense of eeriness, make you care about the characters, which I didn't. Uh, so yeah, it was kind of a kind of a flop for me, like a two star flop for me. Ooh, but it did kick me into getting back into mysteries. So I do read more mysteries in June, which we'll see. But this was kind of a not a good one. Yeah, sorry, Lucy. And the last book that I finished in May is Happy Go Lucky by David Sedaris. And I listened to this one as well. I feel like that's the best way to consume a David Sedaris because he's very funny when he speaks. So this book I picked up because I did a video about funny books and I talked about David Sedaris and I was like, I haven't really read that many David Sedaris's. So I figured I'd read some more. And this one was really funny. This one is his 2022, so his most recent book. And it talks a lot about his dad and he talked about his dad in other books before, but in this one, he kind of re like removes the polish he put on him and realize, reveals like how much of a bad guy he was. I'm trying not to say cuss words about this dead man, but I mean, he's kind of a piece of shit. So anyway, <laughs> yeah, so this book is also, it's about, it talks a little bit about COVID, which is not my favorite topic to read about. I just, anytime a book brings up COVID, I just, I'm like, I don't want to read about it. I lived it. I'm good. Thank you. Those were not times I want to remember. There are times I want to continue to black out from my memory. Like genuinely, no memories from 2020. What happened? I was unemployed. I don't remember. I feel like this book did a good job not leaning into COVID too much. It still captures some time before COVID. It's not the whole book, which I appreciate. And it really captures that sense of just complete loss, not loss as in like death, but like we're, I just felt very lost during COVID. And I feel like David Sedaris really captures that in what, what he writes about and his long walks he went on, which is, you know, a staple of COVID and also a staple of a David Sedaris book. But yeah, this one was very funny. I think probably another four star for me, lots of four stars this month, lots of okay, great books, but only one winner. So those were all the books that I read in May. Now we are gonna figure out what the hell did I read in June? And I should know because it just happened. It is just starting July, but I don't remember. The first book that I read in June is Marple 12 New Mysteries, which is an amalgamation of a bunch of stories based on the Miss Marple character from Agatha Christie, but it was released recently. So obviously Aggie didn't write it because she is dead, but it's 12 different female writers and they're kind of some of them are mystery writers some of them aren't yeah they're all they're all women right yeah and I hadn't ever read a Marple mystery so this was kind of a weird way to begin I think but I enjoyed some more than others the funny thing is I really enjoyed the Lucy Foley uh Miss Marple story and I didn't think I was going to and I didn't really like the Lee Bardugo one so it's like what's going on I don't know but I, I think this is a cool idea to have a bunch of writers come together and write stories in a universe of 
a writer that inspired them and is, you know, an iconic female author. So it was a cool premise. There is definitely a mixed bag of stories. I preferred the ones that were in Miss Marple's perspective and were shorter. The ones that were like the chapter versions of them, they like weren't just like one long story. I didn't enjoy as much, but I feel like this would be like a good gift for your grandma. Uh, if you're looking for a, a gift for your grandma, it's a great option. That's a very niche recommendation, but it's a recommendation that's helpful for me because I love buying my books for my grandma. The next book that I finished in June that I was working on a lot through May was The Secret History by Donna Tartt. I have been meaning to read this for so long. I picked it up last fall and I finally got around to it and it was really good. It's probably like a four and a half. It's not a five, but it is better than those other books I just gave a four. So we're going to give it a four and a half. This was, as I expected, a slow read and I knew that going in. I feel like if you thought you were getting a romp, like a thriller romp, you were really gonna not like this. But if you go into it knowing it's kind of a slow burn, kind of a like no plot, just vibes, even though there is a murder, that's not a spoiler. They do that in the, the beginning in the prologue. But this book is mostly a critique on academia and the pretentiousness that comes with it. So the characters just really don't care about anyone that's outside of their circle or that can't like give them anything in the world they care about. All they care about is the classics and they don't care about like there was one point where the, the characters didn't even know we went to the moon. Okay, that's a weird thing not to know. You're supposed to be smart. In my head, being smart means you know a lot about a lot of different things, not just about one thing. This took me a while to read, but not because it was bad, just because it was a bit slow. And, um, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was good. Great, even. The next book that I read was The Happy Place by Emily Henry. Big switch up from The Secret History, to be honest. The reason I read this is because it was available as a rapid read for my library. And I was like, this is the book of the summer. I need to read this right now. So I put it on my Kobo and then I come back like three days later thinking I have it for 14 days and I had it for seven days. So I had to plow through this pretty quickly. I thought it was okay. I think I like Carly Fortune's romance, summer romance books better than I like Emily Henry's. So that was something to learn about myself. But yeah, it was fine. I think I'm kind of getting over the Emily Henry hype. I don't know if that's maybe just because she's so popular. It's kind of like untenable to maintain that high level of quality and love and adoration, but it was fine. If you like Emily Henry, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. If you want a summer read, it's a great summer read. The couple, I found them kind of boring and I didn't really know why they were together. I never, I, I'm finding that in romance books. If I don't find a reason why the couple should be together, it just doesn't really click for me. Like if they don't seem to have some stronger connection. And the main male character, his issue is that he thinks he's boring. So I, I'm sure that that's appealing to some people, but to me to have a character just constantly thinking that they're boring and not worth someone's time is not my ideal book. The next book that I read, I listened to as well, and that was Murder at the Vicarage by our girl Agatha Christie, the first in the Miss Marple series. After reading the Miss Marple collection, I wanted to try reading an actual Miss Marple by Agatha Christie. So I listened to that and I, it was, it was fine. I honestly think I enjoyed the Marple collection a little bit better and I've enjoyed her poor rose a little better. I'm not sure if maybe I should have started with a different uh Miss Marple story because this is like from the 1930s so maybe I should have read one of the later ones that's more popular. I'm still gonna give the series another try but I wasn't super impressed by this. I found it a little long even though it's only 288 pages it, and I listened to it. I just found it a little bit convoluted but I enjoyed that the town was being built up and I'm sure that we meet those characters a lot again in later books. So maybe I would enjoy a sequel a bit more. But yeah, I would, I would probably give this a three and a half as well. It was fine. It wasn't as good as the other Agatha Christie's I've read, but you know, we can't all be superstars. The next book that I read, I also listened to. I listened to uh, both Murder at the Vicarage and I finished Happy Place and I listened to Happy Hour all while on my work trip. So when I was like running around getting things set up, I was listening to audiobooks. So I listened to Happy Hour and I very much enjoyed it. I didn't know if I was going to because this is a part of like the hot sad girl literary 
sphere but it was a lot happier than some of those other ones it wasn't as like doom and gloom and like my life sucks it was a bit more happy and peppy so i enjoyed that the plot of this book is that there's two girls who move to new york and can't work because they don't have visas and i think it's assumed that they're from canada because they also talk about more parks and like camping and vague mentions that if you're from canada and ontario you'd figure out they're from there but it's about them and how they have kind of like really glamorous lives at night but during the day they're just kind of like temp workers like just trying to find money to piece together and they have this really fun summer and i found it interesting i think it kind of falls off at the end a little bit i found the middle the most interesting when they're you know re like really working to string the jobs together and they have all these like fun after evenings out i found that the most interesting obviously that can't be the whole book there has to be like a bit of a, a like fight and you know a plot i suppose so the plot wasn't my favorite but the setting and the feeling that it gave me was definitely my favorite because it was like this is what my life would have been like if i was a different person and that's always what you want in a book i think is to just have a different experience of a life and like a little window into it and i think that this book did a great job giving a window into this different life of these two young girls who have everything in front of them and i just thought it was really fun and it's probably like a four star maybe a four and a half i really enjoyed it i'm being really generous with the stars today so i probably will walk a lot of these back but happy hour by marlo granados was great the next book i listened to still on my trip was cast and this is the young adult version by isabel wilkerson I tried to listen to the adult version and I'm not sure why I did. I, I found that the beginning of the book was very reliant on allegories to a point where I was like, again, I were talking about cast and race, but I think that was just kind of setting the premise for the book. I have listened to a podcast years ago when Isabel Wilkerson was on Armchair Expert. So I was already bought into the conceit of the book. So I didn't feel like I needed that primer. So when I started listening to it again after having DNF'd it a couple months ago, I think I skipped that chapter or I just like wasn't paying attention, which is great about audiobooks. If you don't want to read it, you can just not pay attention. I'm glad I picked this book up again because I found it really interesting to compare the racial, the racial injustice in the States to other caste systems in Germany in the 1930s and then the Indian caste system, which is the whole premise of the book. What I found really interesting was how Isabel Wilkerson was able to tie modern day discrimination and systemic discrimination back to slavery and tie it all throughout the past several hundred years and just tie everything all together. And it makes more sense when you do it like that. It's similar to how in Canada we've systemically destroyed Indigenous communities and you think like, oh no, residential schools were a long time ago. That's not really true, but there are still echoes of that being felt in the community. So I felt what this book did really well was being able to tie those echoes back to slavery and back to just complete cultural systemic discrimination against Black people in the U.S. And if you're interested, if that topic sounds interesting to you, I would definitely give it a, I listen to it. I'm sure it would be a great read as well. I find nonfiction easier to digest as an audiobook, but I, the young adult one was good. I am a young adult, so I'm allowed to read that. It's not a cheat. I'm a youth. I'm youthful. Don't deny me that. I listened to a lot of audiobooks this month. So the next book I also listened to was Romantic Comedy by Curtis Sittenfield. And I was super excited for this book because when I read the premise, like, oh, it's an SNL based romance about how they're all the men who work there always end up with like really hot and successful women. And that never happens in the inverse. And this story was kind of about the inverse. And what I found super interesting was the SNL part of, well, okay, it's not called SNL, it's called something else, but we know it's SNL. What I found the most interesting was the time at SNL and going through that experience and like kind of walking us through what a week at SNL looks like. And I listened to podcasts with a lot of ex SNL people. So it tracked with what they've said about it. And I just have a general interest in the, in comedy. So I found this was super interesting, but then that stops like act one is that, and then act two and three are about COVID. And I was like, <laughs> I don't want to read about COVID. I hadn't heard anyone talk about how that was the last two thirds of the book. Uh, we're only at SNL for like a hundred pages and then the rest of it 
is emails. I would say it was probably like a three star. I've read a lot of kind of disappointing romances in the past couple months, so that's not great. But I had really high hopes for this and I was disappointed. I think this book could have been greatly improved if it was mostly just focused on the SML part and being mostly set there rather than COVID happening because COVID happened in my real life. I don't want to read about it. I'm sorry. I don't know if people actually do enjoy reading about it. So if that's the case, you might like this. But for me, it was just like, you took this awesome concept and kind of just ruined it for me. And then the last book that I listened to in June was The Office BFFs, which is the book from Angela Kinsey and I almost said Pam Beasley and Jenna Fisher. And they have the Office Ladies podcast, which I don't actually listen to, but I'm a huge fan of The Office and those two are so sweet. I love that they're best friends. I appreciate when people do audiobooks and they take the opportunity to change the book to fit the format a little better. So they would mention that it was an audiobook. And then when they would each pop into each other's conversations and have genuine moments of like sharing their feelings, it was so sweet and you could hear the emotion in their voices. And there was also like added songs and they had extra people from the cast come in and do little chatting, like just little uh, inserts. And I thought that was really cute. Overall, if you, if you don't watch The Office, I don't think you'll enjoy this book. But if you do watch and love The Office, I think you'll love it. And I think it was awesome how they took the opportunity to use the audiobook format to its fullest extent. I love audiobooks and I think it's a great opportunity to make your book slightly different rather than just kind of reading it verbatim, you know? Yeah, it was, it was cute. I would probably give it like a three and a half stars. It wasn't like stellar, but it was very sweet and it was kind of what I needed after having read some stinkers, so. Yeah, those were all the books that I read in May and June. I'm hoping that July is going to be a bit more of a prolific month. I was super busy in May and June. As I've mentioned a thousand times, I moved. So I was packing and then moving and then I was on a work trip. And but I still I still read books on my work trip while I was I was doing I was working. Like I wasn't like I wasn't working. I was working through my employer. I was working, uh, but I was also listening. I can do many things. So yeah, I, I didn't read a ton, but summer is usually a big reading month for me. I've already finished a couple books in July, so I'm excited to chat about those because they've been really good. And yeah, I hope you have an awesome rest of your day. Happy July, happy summer, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!